So, Guoyang, uh, you try. Oh, hi. nice to see you. <laughs> nice to see you. Yeah, we didn't see each other since long time, and uh, thank you very much for your nice talk. And uh, could you please explain to us which kind of feedback law do you implement it in your experimental research? You know what I mean: positive feedback, negative feedback, or the, what is the purpose? You and uh, uh, use the feedback to influence the stiffness or the effective mass or the system damping. You know, you have different ways. To my understanding, in your experimental work, you try just to influence the stiffness of your host structure. Is it right? Yes. Maybe uh, I will go. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I think the the four by four matrix will be. Yeah. Maybe yeah. not four by four matrix. Let me. Yeah. Are they okay? This is important. Yes. The insert this one in here. Yeah. Okay, maybe I will go this way. Go, you, go this picture. Can. Maybe is a is a is a little bit clear. Okay, let me not go to this one. Maybe this one. Okay, let me say this one. Okay. For example, the you forget about this uh, non-local stuff. Just say local because you're talking about mm, the changing the stiffness, right? Say, yeah. for example, you forget about this one. This is one actuator, this sensor, okay? So this is bending, right? So this is bending, then, then this one, you can, you can sense in the elongation, right? Okay? So you can sense in elongation, you have the electrical signal. And then this electrical signal, you can apply to this lower part. So typically, so if you say this one, if you deform the in-phase with this sensing, and then meaning is what you make this a softer because you add, add additional deformation to the host median to deform. Then, then eventually, if you look the effective bending stiffness, the bending stiffness becomes smaller. Then, if you apply the same the, the voltage, but you changing the voltage signal, say you apply the native voltage to this actuator. And then generate opposite deformation to the okay. to, to pull back, then make this the last deformation. Then to make this one uh, like uh, uh, harder. Then this is, you can you can realize okay this material become a softer and harder. Yeah. So then eventually you changing the effective uh, bending stiffness. Okay. But this is only one way. Uh, actually, you can also use something like, you know, acceleration feedback to influence your effective mass. Or if you apply velocity feedback control, you can influence your system damping. I think your, your, your way is just something like displacement feedback control. In this way, you can influence your effective stiffness efficiently. Uh, if you look this kind of effective mass, then yeah. basically it's a, this is a like a deformation. For example, say in here, uh, if you if you sending the bending wave, this sensing will be just sensing this deformation. And then yeah. this is like actuation will apply the force. To this bar, then you generate this force to here. This, yeah. this you can use in different way. This is purely like our design. I will say here is is not smart way. Okay, but this is just illustration. I think people maybe in the future will be come out a better way to 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 come out this kind of a, a design, or if you want to realize this kind of other density behaviors. 
-hmm. Okay. But if you try to increase your effective stiffness, uh, something like you have to apply a negative feedback control scheme. And if you try to decrease your stiffness, and then you have to use a positive feedback. You know, can you combine both positive and negative feedback control in your local scheme? Then it would be nice, you know, to see what happened with, you know, different and uh, directions. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, I mean, left, right or left, you just apply different, you know, feedback control loads to break the geometry, you know? Okay. 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 So you, 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 you want to say, uh, yeah. You, we, we try to mix uh, these two mechanisms in one unit cell or just in different unit cell? Uh, yeah, yes. Okay. okay. Yeah. Thank you. I'm not sure okay. it is, it is uh, appropriate to classify the design here as positive or negative feedback controls. What is designed here is a transfer functions, and this transfer functions is used to transfer the signal from the sensor component to the activated component. It's a little bit different compared to some traditional designed feedback control systems, which control the signal on, the, on itself. And the design transfer functions sometimes increase signal, sometimes decrease the signal. signal. So maybe it's hard to classify it as positive control or the Lective feedback controls. So is the question you you asking? I just uh, explain a little bit, uh, Professor John's uh, questions. He mentioned whether this feedback is a positive or negative feedback controls. So I suppose maybe it's hard to classify this as a positive feedback or negative feedback control, right? For the positive feedback controls, you get a signal stronger and stronger, while for a negative feedback control, you get a signal smaller and smaller. But, but you can relate both to the increase or decrease of your stiffness. Yes, that is true. And yeah. for the transfer yeah. functions, yeah. Right. maybe for some yeah. frequency range, it increases, yeah. for other frequency, it decreases. So, right. So. If you can establish, you know, and uh, that relationship, then you can clearly, you know, identify whether you apply the negative feedback or positive in this way, you know? Usually an increase in your stiffness is related to a negative feedback control. A decrease means you have applied a positive feedback control. You can, you know, derive exactly theoretically, you know, the, the relation in this sense, you know? Yeah. Okay. So maybe, maybe. We, you, you can interpret like this way. Either you say you, you convert your electrical energy to mechanical energy or either mechanical energy convert yeah. to the electrical energy. Mm -hmm. okay. so, but this is like energy exchange. Right. Energy right. exchange. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then maybe we can also give some time to other audience for their questions. So are, are there other questions? Talk later, maybe. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. sure. Thank you. I have two questions. Uh, yes, thank you very ahead. much for your talk. I'm uh, Quentin Coulet from uh, Amsterdam. And I, I find- uh, Nice to see you. <laughs> nice to meet you, yeah. Uh, I have two questions. So first, uh, the first question I have is, uh, do nonlinearities matter in your system? Uh, I would expect I wonder to which extent, which you know, mechanical nonlinearity, perhaps not, but I guess electronic nonlinearities, uh, and and are they important? Uh, this is my first question, and the second question is: I'm interested also to hear your perspective on what could be the the application of your platform in the context of piezoelectrics and kilohertz vibrations, 
do you think there are the interesting uh, applications to think of to use, for instance, this odd uh, micropolarity or odd density concepts? Uh, I think in our system, so far, we, we didn't consider this kind of a long linearity effect. Uh, we are interested in how to, this kind of, the, we are really interested to, to, to try to find a way to, to do long linear, but you know, in the puzzle is, is material is very hard. Our host media is, 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 is very hard too, you know, the metal. So it's not like uh, the what you did, like robotic material. It's, it's a very, very nice idea. So, good. but in, in current region, this is a is linear region. Maybe in the future, uh, if we can apply this concept to, to soft material, so then we could, we could think about this nonlinear region properties. So did that answer your question? Yes, and at the level of the piezo actuators, they don't have nonlinearities or, or not that not very important, I guess. Okay. No, no, no. Okay. no. no. So, what's your second question? Yeah, my question was more in the context of uh, piezos and, and vibrating plates. What are the potential applications of having odd micropolarity or odd density? Do you think could be interesting for uh, or competing with the? With other approaches, to I, I I don't know anything about what you can do with uh, you know flexural waves in terms of application. But I guess that's why I'm interested to hear your perspective on this. Okay, yeah, because we are engineer, we always uh, very it, this is kind of always a challenging problem. Like in uh, we try to say, for example, this is kind of a absorber. We I didn't present here. We, we also do some uh, uh, simulation, say, you can attach this kind of metal layer to the lattice structures. So then you can the, control the vibration of the lattice structure. If you integrate those structure properly into the structure. So, uh, uh, and also, for example, the, the, the way we try to, to do like uh, wave clocking, <laughs> I don't know. You you guys like it, but this could be like a you can you can really in the plate structure you can really say manipulate or protect it some critical area if you implement those structure into the. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other questions? If not, then perhaps I would like to discuss a little bit about uh, your design. This Emo, Emo, have, Emo, Emo has some raised hand. Yeah, I have a... Uh, yeah, please go ahead. But I either, either uh, um, yeah, I can wait after or I can go now. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, and it looks thank like you. You, you have the technology to look to do a lot a lot of uh, things over here so now uh, like you are saying in one slide what what you can do with uh, with these toys <laughs> and uh, I wanna uh, uh, just uh, direct one one possible one possible application okay suppose, suppose you have a uh, a system of uh, fairly thin bars like uh, this one on this slide and then you generate a network so you you solder them or uh, you you join them in 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 nodes and then you have a network of uh, bars which are connected and at a node the dynamics of wave on on this on this system is dictated by the scattering matrix of each of the node if you can control the scattering matrix, basically you have one beam and two beams coming out, mm -hmm. then the dynamics is really controlled by this, how the how the beam, how the wave will be backscattered and how it will scatter in the two. Mm -hmm. 
uh, and if you have control over this scattering matrix, then you can implement basically any any uh, tie binding Hamiltonian. So it looks like to me that with this uh, um, actuator or this uh, um, uh, active F active unit cells, you have you can control the scattering matrix. For these so this is a, this is a, what the, this one is what I try to illustrate. So this is a, this is a scattering matrix for each this the for each. But, uh, you have not thought about uh, splitting splitting the waves, the wave. We did uh, thought about that. Yeah. yeah okay. Uh -huh. So uh, so in fact, uh, yeah. Um, Many people, when they think about uh, uh, this network of bars, they don't realize that the nodes actually can be micro micro pattern, and you can really control how the wave is uh, uh, is is scattered at the nodes, and then you open a huge design design space in which you can implement any tie binding Hamiltonian, particularly any topological insulator from periodic table. Uh, Suppose so we you should can... do a big project together, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yes, because uh, it looks like you uh, you have full control, phase, uh, amplitude, and... Right. Um, Let's talk about this, okay. Let's continue talking about this. Great, so I'll let the other also make the comments and ask questions. Thank you, thank you, Emma. Thank you. Okay, maybe I can just go ahead. So when you're talking about this uh, long look feedback designs, you have demonstrated there will also be long reciprocities. Wave propagation in one direction is enhanced in other directions is attenuated. And I suppose this is due to the fact that you induce this transfer function in the design and particularly, more particularly there are external source, there are um, microcontroller circuit board, right? right? So if we just simply collect the electric piezo patch belongs to unit cells that are several lattice constant away, then this will introduce a long local effect into the systems, but the system is also um, reciprocal, right? Can you say, say give you yeah. this one, right? You're talking, we're talking about this, right? Say, yes. Okay. So basically, we just here we assume if H1 mm -hmm. equal to H2, so this is no original part. We can learn only manipulate the real part. Then you say this is H1 not equal H2. Then you can have like an original part come up. Mm -hmm. Now, what about the piezo patch are simply collected by passive electric wires in the electric component? you do not introduce your external control circuit board into the systems. No, will, they will not. Will there be some? No, I don't think they will. Because they, they, if you pass it, this is uh, energy conservative. But here yes. you, you, you have to like energy non-conservation. Uh, I just wondering if there is such energy conservations totally passive systems, where the electrical wire introduced the local effect into the systems. Because you are collecting unit cells that are several lattice constant away, right? By using this electric wire. So it's like- you mean, you mean just remove this H1, H2, just connect them together? Yes, just um, using electrical wire to connect No, them. no, no transfer function, H1, H2. Yes, no such a transfer functions. Could this be a way to implement long local effect? Because you already know that in my previous design, this wrote metamaterial structures, there are thin bars in the unit cells to collect, to collect the unit cells that are several lattice content away. So it's hard to design this structure, particularly you need to avoid the crossing of those bars. But if the, the couple is too weak electric wires, then I think the design at least looks like uh, much simpler. Look at here. So the condition is here. So the coupling compared with your host medium, the stiffness should be 
I will say compatible. If too mm -hmm. small, the, the effect is not strong enough. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so if it's just simply collected by electrical no, wire, no, no, then no. the mechanical stiffness are much stronger than the, um, let's That's say, exactly. non-local effect right, induced right, by right, 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 right. Okay, okay, thanks. You, you won't, you won't. Uh-huh. I, okay. mm. I have a question, okay. Thinking about this uh, piezoelectric uh, components, I will guess, or as I no, the, the voltages that you'll see there are one volts, two volts, three volts, and the currents are within the order of amps. So this actuator can only handle flow of, uh, of energy of a few watts. So in other words, the, this, uh, because the actuator put the energy in and take the energy out. So if the, if the actuation is too strong, I think that your system will fail at some point. It will not be able to, for example, absorb enough energy. Am I correct? You mean, you mean let's say, activation yeah, let's say. is too strong or sensing is too strong? So, so if, if you pump energy into the system or you have an, a wave coming in with a lot of energy, uh, your, syst your actuator will only can sing that much energy, for example. Mm. Or they can provide only that much energy, so they will likely to fail in in those conditions. Yeah, because mm -hmm. if 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 a, if a wave comes with a big amplitude, like a shock wave, I don't think this oh, system. Oh sure, will, will. Have any that's the, this is a, that's actually I, I agree with you. This is a, maybe I, I should say because, for example, if this is a mechanical system or uh, if you this is when we design if you they have like a local resonance okay here so that signal very strong will be make the electrical circuits unstable this is kind of unstable you you need to study this unstable ability and this is a, one of the challenging to to implement this circuit or you can say is a limitation of this yes. Because you have this um, experiment with full, fully absorbing uh, edge, well, where is that energy going? Well, it goes into the electrical circuit. But if the piezoelectrics can handle only amps and volts, there is only that much of energy that can be sank through the piezo material. So in other words, your system will not be able to keep up if the wave coming in carries more, uh, more energy, more it has. I agree. I agree. Yes. Okay. If no one have other question, I have another one. So while you are designing these transfer functions, so I suppose the delay between the sensing and actuation is not a is not an issue for the systems, right? The delay should be very very weak. There are always existing delay, but but think about the electronic signal, the delay is very small. It's, it's very, very small compared to the mechanical. That's the so reason why we the pillow. Yes. yes. Uh, and the then reason. for the design of the transfer functions, you need to know the priority, the incident signal, or that is not necessary. This is needed, right? Why you design transfer functions? The, Let's say if you no, want to this, this, because design function is is like we this depends on what we are so we had the sensing you know this design mm -hmm. fun, this trend function really depends on what kind of a for example in here because this is everything is in the four you we call the feed four okay if you sensing here then you automatically carry the instant wave you know then you 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 apply this one in the in the voltage then what I'm saying is like, uh, uh, is a, is automatically carry the sensing signal. What I but it, it's, yes. it's instantaneous, it's instantaneous. So it takes right, in. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. This is simultaneous. Yes, I know this calculation is automatically um, calculated based on the transfer functions. That is true. Um, this does not depend on the incident waveform. Let's say the incident wave is a plane wave or it's a spheric wave. 
it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter because this is this at train function is just just want to do some function what you want to realize. You know, if you for example if if you do transfer function, you want to generate the bending, you just apply symmetric loading. Then if you want to generate the shear, you apply shear loading. Then transfer function is just to give you, say, amplitude or phase, what do you want to control? Then if you control the amplitude of the phase, it means you control the abilities. You control the function ability because you design. Uh, Maybe, no, I, uh, okay. I, 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 I will, I will I give you this, maybe give you th this this one, right? Because each of them, for example, this is actuator, right? So then this is gonna be generated the wave and this way you design it by yourself, then it's like a different phase slope. Then you apply this one. But when you get this, when you get this one, you automatically you know this is, you should be like phase slope in here. So then in your trend function automatically carry this one. That's why when you do different function, for example, in here, if you want to steal into 33, then you know this slope like this, the end, the distance, right? Then you can apply this delta phi into the trend function. Then you, you, you change in the delta phi. Then if you okay. want to say, okay, delta 50 degree, then you apply different delta phi into your trend function. Okay, then I think I understand. So this does not depend on the incident angle of the incident wave, right? No, no, this does it matter. does not depend. Yes, yes. Okay. So this is a beauty. So you, that's the why we need to add sensing in here because if you, I think this is a design. Uh, although it's a, uh, it's not published in the, it's a smart material structure. I think it is beautiful design because you, if you look here, this is subtracting the actuation is totally decoupled. But here, uh, when when you say phase shifter, you must have the time period of the cycle. So uh, maybe phase shifter. Oh, yeah. you mean For example, this is phase. If you do you here, mean a this time is related to the trend function. See, this is the trend function. Here. Yes, but this uh, delta phi must be relative to to the cycle to the. So instead of phase shifter, should be a time delay rather than phase shifter. Or how? So, so phase shifter, when you have a phase shifter, you must immediately know what is the time period of the cycles so that the phase shift has a meaning. Mm. I try to understand what you say. Why you needed to understand? Uh, the, say in here, I, for example, in here actually, have, when I, you do the instant wave, then every sensing they were sensing the instant wave of the face. Yes, but when you it's do already automatically sensed by the, the the two sensors, then you just want to on original the face. You shift whatever you want. Then you, yeah. you, you, then you, you, beside on the face you had, then you do additional. Well, maybe we we'll did another the way. Phase, the face must, must, must be relative to I omega T. Um, so if, if you don't, if you don't know what I omega, omega T is, then the face has no. So in other words, in this, in this experiment, the phase shift must be, uh, relative to the you know, frequency dependent. No. If you change the incident wave frequency, the transmission wave will be at a different angle, right? Yeah. Oh, for, for sure. That, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, right. that's what I'm yeah. saying. That's uh, what I'm saying. That should be, of course, of course. Yes. 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 <clears throat> so if you want to keep it at 33 and have it at 33 for every, every uh, frequency, then your sensor should should read out somehow the frequency and adjust. Right, right. The, this is the, also a challenging question when we the, some reviewers ask us. But I think this I don't know. This is a question is reasonable. He asked us, for example, if I send broadband frequency simultaneously, yeah. can you do that? Is challenging. Look at here, everything is like this, uh, like a sinusoidal wave, like a single. And as, 
I think that applies also to your clocking, is it? The clocking experiment? Right. So can I ask when the, you know, with this submarine business, when they send uh, waves and they probe if the submarine is around or not, like uh, the ray sonic radar, do they send a certain frequency or they send a broadband? <laughs> I think it's a certain frequency. It's a certain it's frequency? Certain, yeah. It's certain. Because you're using the radar, you radar you in some certain frequency. So then your technology has some uh, uh, some chance of, uh, of success over there to clock a whole submarine. Actually, that one is exactly follow the concept like we LSAT. Then because LSAT is like the sensing to the actuation there. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Can I ask these uh, plates? Um, in one, ex are they aluminum plates? Uh, I think that this one is steel. Steel. Oh, I forgot. I forgot. So. Uh, aluminum, steel doesn't matter. Yeah, wonderful. But, Metal. Okay. But that's the that's the choice. In in one of the pictures, it looks like it was plexiglass, but you'll never use plexiglass, isn't it? No, we never. Which one? I, I never using. The, uh -huh. like, uh, Maybe it was shiny and. Uh, yeah, so we I'm never asking, use it. No, no. Never. I'm asking because plexiglass will be easier, for example, to laser cut or uh, um, as opposed to. To aluminum or uh, or steel plates. Um, In so principle, was... that should be fine. If this is the the medium, they have don't have like very strong damping. Because when we're talking about the wave propagation, we don't want to be in the very damp like uh, yeah. Uh, so I was, high I, damping material. I was wondering if you experimented with plexiglass to see if you, if it's reasonable or if one should one should not even think about it. I think it should be. Should be. Uh -huh. If you are interested, I can do the experimental for you. <laughs> yeah, because uh, <laughs> yeah, plexiglass. It's uh, you know you can laser cut. It's a uh, it's a wonderful. But actually, this metal is a laser cut too. This is but, metal is a laser cut too. We we do you, we cut do you this have pattern. A laser cut? This pattern is for example is we ask some laser cut. Do you have it at uh, in your department? No, no. Well, this is a very easy to find the commercial company to do for us. Uh -huh. Yeah. It's all laser cut. Even recently, this is laser cut too. And this is a laser cut too. Laser cut this slit. Uh huh. So then the cycle is okay, you send it, you wait one week. Maybe comes back. Right, right, right. This is also laser cut too. So, well, mm, so are there are other people have some questions? Uh, yes. Hello. Could you hear me? Yeah. Sorry, we have uh, <laughs> spent some time okay. here. Then. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mm, thank you, Professor Huang, for your uh, inspiring work and presentation. May I first give a comment about Professor Proden that I think this structure is real-time control. That's it's based, it should be a broadband frequency, just as uh, just as Professor Huang's and Xiao Peng Li's work uh, paper at 2018. Uh, uh -huh. That for for multiple frequencies, it sends the voltage. This voltage contains mountain frequencies, so it can it can apply different the transfer functions to these frequencies. So I think it basically it's this, this. So I think for for the uh, for the uh, for the uh, for the match uh, surface that's uh, multiple directions at different frequencies that propagate at the same time, it should work. Yes, Another, I will. I will, I, will, I, will I was just saying that the transfer function will change with the with the frequency. Yes. But, but, but if, they're asking if simultaneous, for example, you put like two cycles, 
they have a broadband frequency component. That's going to be harder. So I think yes, you, yes. You, you, you have to put a time delay between the sensor. So if you, if, you, if you take measurements instantaneously in time, you won't be able to solve the problem. But if you take measurements over a small interval of time, then you can uh, you have more more ways to to design the feedback loop. <clears throat> oh yes, and then <laughs> that is also my question. Uh, that uh, I try, thank you, Professor, for, for your great work, and I did a lot a little bit work based on shopping list work and achieved very good results. Uh, but one question this board um, is bothering me is that how to uh, how to choose the upper and lower limit for the voltages that you applied on the on the actuator, like 50 times or, or 100 times for an actuator? <laughs> so, oh, that's a good question. So, but maybe Xiao Peng is the best person to answer you, you know. But I, what I know is uh, you can, you, the voltage they have like, you can, cannot break down the piezo electrical property they have a limit, you know. Uh, if you apply the high voltage, the piezo effect will be disappeared. Yeah. So that's why you have a limitation, for example, amplification uh, go to how many times, okay. Okay, thank you so much. And another is that, um, uh, it's quite bothering me is that uh, actually this, this effective stiffness or the effective Young's models uh, a simplified model is based on the flexure wave. And just as also Professor Ruthney and also Professor uh, Sebastian Gnome, but what is uh, the apply, uh, application ranges like the frequency or the active control, something like that, is there any limitations? Because some scholars apply this to, to very, very high frequencies. So then, then because typically what we did is like, uh, low frequency homogeneization, we didn't consider the phase difference. If you go to very high frequency, so you have to catch this kind of a phase difference. They're gonna be, yeah. It's a, some people did this, but I, I'm not sure because if you go to the high frequency, what's the really meaning of the effective properties? Maybe they don't have effective properties, like, like we do the phononic crystals. Nobody care about this uh, effective problems. Okay, thank, you, thank you so much. <laughs> okay, thank you everyone for staying here with us for more than one and a half hours. I think there are no further questions <laughs> from the audience or if there are, just please go ahead. Or maybe we can end up here. And Bogdan, do you have some other thing to say? Uh, I just want to thank you, um, everyone. Uh, thank, uh, thanks, uh, Professor Wang, uh, for the exceptional uh, talk, seminar. Uh, lots of uh, very interesting uh, information. And uh, yeah, let's uh, thanks again. Thank you, Emil. Thanks, um, Incham, thank for, uh, for the uh, very interesting uh, discussions, uh, first of all, and uh, thanks everyone. And uh, see you next week uh, when we have, uh, let me see, uh, Professor um, Jean-Francois Sambla for, uh, from Insta Paris, um, speaking about uh, wave structures interaction uh, due to earthquakes, so uh, seismic metamaterials. Okay, see you next week. Thanks, uh, thanks again. Stay safe, guys. Okay, thank you. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.